Hello and welcome back to another episode of Mondays with Maria. I'm Charlie Pogue, Communications Manager for the Daniello Institute for Veterans and Military Families. And with me is Maria McConville, Senior Advisor here at the IVMF. Maria, welcome. Thanks, Charlie. It's good to be back. Today we're talking about PCSing, something that is near and dear to every military family member's heart. From June to September every year is PCS season throughout the Department of Defense when one third of service members will receive PCS orders to change their duty station. Maria, can you share a little bit about your experiences with PCSing? Sure, so PCS, well, as you might have heard on a previous episode, uh, as a spouse, I did 23 PCS moves with my service member who served for 42 years. But uh, I grew up in a family of six kids and I was very fortunate that our parents loved to travel. So to me, PCSing meant a new adventure, yet it also meant new challenges, right? So lots of new challenges for family members. And to talk about some of the challenges, uh, what were some of the challenges that you faced specifically as an entrepreneur and a military spouse uh, through all these PCSs? Yes, yeah, so uh, having moved as many times as we did, obviously uh, every time we moved, it was looking for a job over and over and over again. So I felt like we would move somewhere, it would take me several months to find a new job, and then I would finally get comfortable in that job, and then my husband would get orders again. And I also felt that every time that we moved, it was for an upward career trajectory for him in the military, but not for me. I felt like every time we moved, his career went up, but I started over again at an entry level position, knowing that we were just gonna probably move in a couple months or a couple of years. So I, I felt like it really held me back from going for anything other than an entry level position. Absolutely. It, you know, I've got my own experiences with my wife being a speech and language pathologist and watching her struggle through that every time we moved. And it, it is definitely a, a setback for her in her career, be able to do the job that she wants to do, but sacrificing because she was married to a service member. Um, and looking back at during your time, and, and what were some of the resources you used uh, as far as to get through those challenging times? Well, that's a really good question because uh, serving as long as my husband served, obviously our service goes way back. And back before we had the internet and all of, uh, the access at our fingertips to be able to research things, I didn't know about resources that were available. And so I relied upon actually those in my career field. So as a registered dietitian, I hired and uh, paid for other people to mentor me and to coach me and give me some of the resources that I didn't know were available. But as I said, then, you know, inevitably it would be time for him to get orders again. But there were times when I was able to make a pivot in my career. So at one point I had realized that over half of registered dietitians had a master's degree. And so when we moved to uh, our next duty station, I said, this is it. I've got to get a master's degree. So so I went to the local college and said, how can you help me get this done within 22 months? Because I knew we'd be moving again in under two years. And so fortunately, I was able to work with the staff at that institution who helped me set up my program so that I could finish in three years, or in, I'm sorry, in two years. And I'm proud to say that I walked across that stage with my master's degree two weeks before he came home from his 15 month deployment. So that was a big pivot that I was able to take at that time with that PCS move was by getting an advanced degree. And then after I think 12 career changes, I finally decided this is it. I need to find something that I can create and take with me everywhere we go. So I started my own LLC in 2015 uh, with my nutrition consulting business. I did not know about IVMF at the time, wished I had, uh, but now there are so many more resources, especially things like this amazing VWISE conference that empowers women entrepreneurs, gives them the resources that they need and follows them along from their ideation all the way through the creation of their business and beyond. So I think this is really, um, one of the great resources out there. The IVMF also has the Onward to Opportunity program, right, where spouses and veterans can get uh, certifications, and I think it's like 30 to 35 different professions. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so there are a lot of options available at the IVMF to help you in those times. If you're looking to make a pivot, like Maria said, and start something new in life, whether it be a business, career training, or higher education, we're here to help. 
Maria, that's all we have for this episode. Is there anything that you would like to leave the viewers with? Just if there's something out there that you're looking for, contact IVMF. And if they don't have the resources available to you, they will point you in the right direction. Thanks for having me again. Thanks for being here. And until next time, we hope you join us next month.